This video, we're going to be replacing the worst fighter from every series in Smash Ultimate with new ones. For as massive as the Smash roster is, there's certainly a great mix of fighters who just have to be there, those who are unexpectedly great additions to the game, and those who just suck. Some of the characters we're going to be replacing today just leave me scratching my head as to why they got a spot in Smash in the first place, as opposed to a character who could have either been more deserving, or more importantly, more unique and fun to play. But not every series is like that, there's going to be some where the decision on who has to go is going to be really tough, making me pretty thankful there's no visible dislikes anymore. So before you hate me for cutting your favorite character, remember to subscribe since only a small portion of people who watch my content actually are. So shameless. Two rules here, if the series only has one character, they obviously don't count since the the worst character also happens to be the best character. Also no echoes, they were only included in the game as an easy way to pad out the number of characters in the roster, and if they were gonna be replaced, they would have to be with another echo to make sense. We can't just imagine that they had like an extra year of development time to make completely original replacements, right? And I'm sure you'd all just love the content of me going through 7 series in a row replacing all the characters for the exact same reason. Semi and pseudo clones are fair game though, if Nintendo is trying to pass off to the public that every non-echo is a completely unique original character, no reason for me to not play along. According to the official Smash website, the Mario series has 9 representatives in the game, 8 of which are eligible to be cut for this video, and unlike some that we've got coming up, this one wasn't too difficult. Dr. Mario is definitely the worst out of the bunch here for a variety of reasons. Despite differences in their down specials, aerials, and Doctor's generally slower and more power-based gameplay style, their movesets are completely the same outside of simple changes to how the moves look. Fireballs and pills? Two completely different attacks, right? It's not just the moveset reuse though. Doctor is arguably the least iconic Mario rep there is. Yeah, Piranha Plant is a generic enemy and all, but he's also in pretty much every game there is, he's extremely recognizable. Doctor almost exclusively appears in his own series, a series which, with the closing of Doctor Mario World on mobile, has shown isn't exactly the most popular out there. Trust me, I like Tetra-styled gameplay as much as the next guy, but that does not mean you have to give him a roster spot in Smash. There's no reason for why he couldn't have been an alt like Builder Mario, but Melee just had to have that one extra character slot, so he was included as an easy clone to a character that already had one from the beginning. Ugh. <sighs> Guess now wouldn't be the best time to point out that I actually like playing the character, huh? I'm not gonna let personal biases creep through though, what I'm saying here probably isn't too controversial to anybody, but my decision on who to replace on the other hand? That might be. By removing someone who serves the purpose of representing their own series, it doesn't make much sense to me to add someone like Waluigi who does not. Would I like to see him in sometime? Yeah, but he's definitely not the most fitting to take this spot specifically. We need someone like Rosalina who, while she's definitely got some problems, at least represents Mario Galaxy while still standing on her own as a fighter. Well, I guess not really alone, huh? The character we need is Paper Mario. We're taking away a poorly executed alternate version of Mario here and replacing it with one who would have a very unique moveset of his own. While modernly he's known for using the hammer a lot, a Paper Mario moveset in Smash could be much more unique than that. What if he gets help from various partner characters he's had throughout the series? What if he folds into various forms like he does in the Origami King? The Papercraft version of Mario could be a great final Smash concept, I just think there's so much more potential here than many may initially believe, while simultaneously promoting a franchise which Smash hasn't given too much focus to. There's a pretty nice Stage, but only a few music tracks to go along with it and no assist trophies. And if all we had to lose for it was Dr. Mario? Sign me up. Now for the Donkey Kong series, this decision was definitely not as simple. Looking at the three characters that we got, who would you say is the worst? K. Roll was the hyped up new antagonist added to the base game of Smash Ultimate with an interesting moveset for a heavyweight and tons of personality being showcased in his design. Diddy Kong certainly isn't a bad character either, he's got the peanut shooting, the banana peels, and represents his own racing game. So I've got to admit, I really thought about it. I was actually debating in my head would it make any logical sense to consider replacing Donkey Kong for the Donkey Kong series. Yeah, I'm probably crazy. But I did have a thought process going on here. I wasn't the development team behind Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I actually double checked this. But before I explain why, I've gotta say it's not because he keeps getting his banana stolen. Although if DK did want to try and prevent theft, he could use the extra time saving carry essentials, the sponsor of this video. Extra is the world's largest smart wallet brand, designing innovative solutions to improve the way you carry your everyday items. Maybe not thousands of bananas like our boy DK, but wallets, cards, phones, tablets, they might be something you have that thieves want to get a hold of, but you can be prepared. I got their protective laptop sleeve which has magnetic closure and lots of padding and was especially impressed with their parliament wallet and card holder. Their wallets give you every card you need, right at your fingertips comes with RFID protection keeping your money, cards, and identity safer than ever before, all coated in premium leather. I was surprised at the slimness too, giving you much more room than your standard wallet. But what if you were to drop it somewhere? Well Extra has these incredible trackers that you can insert into your wallet so snugly they connect right to an app that you can ring it with on your phone. Their solar 
powered as well, allowing for just 2 hours of sunlight to give up to 3 months of charge, and can even be voice activated with your Google Home, Alexa, or Siri. They're having a Valentine's sale from January 18th to February 14th, giving you 20% off, but in addition, if you use the discount link in the description below, you'll get an extra 5% off. So now is definitely the time to pick up any of these items and to be prepared, unlike our boy Donkey Kong. But why did I actually consider replacing him in the first place? DK has a very simplistic moveset. Back when he was originally put in Smash 64, they probably just based it on, oh, this guy has big arms. Let's just give him a bunch of punches, right? And for the time, this kind of sucked, and I still wish there were some changes like the barrel throw and whatnot, but you know what? Over the years, they've kind of retconned the character in the mainline games to at least give him some of these smash moves, like his forward air, mega punch, final smash, and the like, not to mention that this desired barrel throw is already kind of referenced in his grab. He stands out from any other heavyweights in the game because of all this. It's all simple, but it does feel like you're playing as Donkey Kong in Smash, which is really what it's all about. This is completely excluding the fact that Donkey Kong is an icon of the video game industry, serving as a protagonist of his own country series while providing an antagonist to Mario, one of the first ever video game rivalries. So no, we're not replacing Donkey Kong. And despite Diddy's higher iconic status in comparison to K. Roll, he's my choice to replace, and we're going with Dixie here. As I mentioned, I really don't have any gripes with Diddy, but in my opinion, he's arguably the worst out of the three, and even if he wasn't, he's definitely got the most fitting replacement ever with Dixie. While the peanut gun and the jetpack would have to be replaced with other attacks unique to Dixie Kong, like the hair twirling, many of the other ones could remain the same. So if you like Diddy, we're not losing a whole lot here. I've made videos before about who I'd cut from the Smash roster if it had to be drastically reduced in size, and in one of them, I kept Diddy while cutting K. Rool. But not only have many of my opinions changed since then, <clears throat> um, maybe that idea to cut Captain Falcon wasn't exactly the best, just saying, the idea of cutting K. Rool makes much less sense in a replacement scenario. Who would we swap him with? Lord Frederick? One of the other one-off villains from the franchise? If the argument to cut K. Rool was based on his lack of popularity, wouldn't it just be getting worse by replacing him with someone who doesn't have nearly the amount of the legacy and following as him? Bottom line is this was a tough call, but in my opinion, we're not losing too much here by swapping Diddy for Dixie, although ideally, none would be replaced at all for me, just some moveset reworks. In a stark contrast to Donkey Kong, The Legend of Zelda has a problem of possibly having the worst overall series representation fighter-wise, a title you definitely do not want to hold in Smash. Three links, two forms of Zelda and a Ganondorf who was for some reason based on Captain Falcon's moveset. But at least over the years, some of these guys have gotten more unique, Standard Link has gotten the Breath of the Wild bomb, Zelda and Sheik got split into two separate slots, Ganon got his sword, but Toon and Young Link? they're still mostly the same. One of these guys has gotta go, and the clear choice for me here is Young Link. The moveset's becoming mostly irrelevant, leaves the character's icon levels the main tiebreaker, and on the one hand, we've got a character who represents a whole slew of Zelda games in the quote-unquote Toon style, Wind Waker, Four Swords, Spirit Tracks, several others, whereas Young Link is mainly known for appearances in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. And it's not like he was given a unique moveset from Majora's Mask either, he can't even use any of the transformation masks in Smash, a major piece of wasted potential to represent one of the most unique games in the history of the series. Series. And because of that, we're gonna replace him with Skull Kid from the same game. Not only does this get another villain in the roster, which I'd love to see, but he's also got one of the most unique moveset possibilities in Smash, with the use of his fairies, title and tail, shooting lasers from his mask like in Hyrule Warriors, along with a variety of dark magical abilities from Majora, even tapping into appearances of the Skull Kids in other games like Twilight Princess if needed. If they weren't going to give Young Link a completely unique moveset, this type of replacement is definitely the way to go. Metroid can be cast in a similar light to the Zelda series in the minds of many, since there's three versions of Samus, but but at least with one being classified as an Echo and Zerzu having a different moveset, it's a lot more palatable to me. Especially since they gave us Ridley an ultimate, which is still tough to believe now, my god. The obvious choice to cut for me though is Zerzu. I think the idea is unique, but considering how infrequently she appears in this form and the icon level of Standard Samus and Ridley in comparison, the moveset could only carry her so far. And even then, it's not really that crazy. Sorry Zerzu fans. So who should we swap her out for? My pick is Emmy from Metroid Dread. Yeah, yeah, call out a cop out picking the popular new character, but this one could potentially be very fun to play. Emmy is a powerful form of robot from the Galactic Federation who are some of the secondary villains of Dread that Samus cannot defeat with normal weapons, making them much more powerful than the standard enemy in the game. This combined with their abilities to climb walls, which in Smash could probably translate to quick and efficient movement options, and being able to shoot paralyzing beams and ice missiles, which could lead to powerful follow-up attacks after slowing the opponent down. Not to mention their various colors in the game could provide us with many seamless alternate costume ideas, which if you've been watching my content for a while now, you know is definitely appreciated by 
many fans. Also, if you're not too familiar with the promotional cycle of Dread, you should know that these guys were promoted a lot, showcased by far the most out of any of the new villains, even getting an amiibo. Lots of people know who the Emmy is, maybe not by name, but by look for sure. And it's so satisfying at this point in history to know that the too big argument has been completely thrown out the window. Sure, taking out Zero Suit for another villain gives us three of them and just one hero to fight them, but thinking about it, the one versus all dynamic couldn't be more fitting for a character like Samus in Smash, really. So would I be fine with a boss or assist trophy appearance of Emmy sometime? Sure. The playable role is my ideal way to go. Kirby is a similar situation to Donkey Kong to me series-wise. Both have three characters without many problems, so replacing one doesn't seem overly necessary to me, but at least here the worst character seems more clear-cut, with this one being Meta Knight. He's got an entirely physically based moveset with some references to his fights, but a lot that was completely original for Smash, and it's not like he's an archetype for anything like a prototypical swordsman or brawler, he's just a mishmash of styles. And nothing screams overly interesting to have this supersede his lack of popularity in comparison to the mascot or main villain of the franchise, both of whom have interesting aspects of their own movesets anyway. But I still like the idea of a secondary villain for Kirby to face next to DDD though, so for a replacement, I'd go with Marks, a villain from Kirby Superstar that got a recent resurgence in Star Allies. Due to this and his boss appearance in Smash Ultimate, he's received a lot more popularity recently, which works well for a brand new addition to the Smash roster. Combined with his fun moveset potential using the ice orbs, black holes, arrows, and psychic energy, he'd be unlike anything before, and makes a lot more sense in this case than someone like Bandanity, since we're replacing a villain here and there's been a lot of inconsistency as to the location on the good guy, bad guy spectrum for Waddle Dee's over the years. Guess this replacement is punishment for all the fun Meta Knight mains had in their brawl days, huh? Star Fox is a Smash franchise that I don't see complained about very often, despite all three of its quote-unquote original characters not being unique from each other at all. Yeah, a couple moves are tweaked here and there, but will we really be losing much if there was just one Star Fox rep that made every character a skin like Bowser Jr. in the Koopalings? Don't think so. Due to this, we're left with one of two characters to choose to cut, Falco or Wolf, since replacing Fox makes absolutely no sense. And for this, I'm gonna go with Falco here. Not only do I prefer having the hero versus villain dynamic of Fox and Wolf here, but Wolf is much more interesting in my opinion. Falco to me is just the worst executed version of this moveset, a more boring version of Fox to be blunt, so it doesn't hurt to have this external aspect lineup either. We're gonna replace him with Crystal because of course we are. We talk about her all the time in videos, mostly because she was actually intended to be in Smash at one point, but ultimately got rejected. This is quite a shame to me as her moveset could have been fun, with her basic attacks focusing around the staff that could use magical abilities and her special moves, like shooting fire or spawning warp portals, something that could have actually made her stand out from not only the rest of the Star Fox reps, but from the rest of the Smash roster in general. She's in Assist Trophy now, and we don't have any that are also playable in the roster yet, so some of you may not like the idea, but hey, some said spirits couldn't be fighters either, and this didn't stop Min Min from getting in, so maybe this logic could extend here. Falco would almost never get cut at this point, he's so synonymous with Smash, but hey, this is a challenge video, and would I prefer the cast of Fox, Wolf, and Crystal over Fox, Wolf, and Falco? Absolutely. Pokemon is tied for the second highest number of characters in Smash, and even though they actually have no echoes, not every one of them happens to hit. Pikachu and Pichu, as well as Mewtwo and Lucario, have some moveset similarities. Jigglypuff and Incineroar were both iffy picks to me and don't have the craziest movesets, but these are all minor complaints. Out of all these though, Pichu is the one that I have the biggest problem with, and it mainly comes with the aesthetics of it. Being Pikachu's Prevo, they look very similar, have similar moves, and while they represent two different generations and Pichu does showcase the breeding mechanic of Gen 2 in a way, I'd still prefer a unique character over all of that. But what what if we can actually take the best of both worlds for a replacement? Let's get a new generation represented, a unique moveset, and on top of all of that, a big Pokemon side series showcase too. I've mentioned this idea before, and in this case, Grovile would still be the perfect replacement to me. So for years, fans have clamored for a fire, water, grass core for the starters in Smash, since nowadays that's pretty much the only new fighters for the series that we get. If we had Greninja, Incineroar, and a solo grass starter, that trio would be complete. And while I think it would be nice if we had to include a fighter like Rillaboom who potentially wouldn't be very unique, I definitely wouldn't be for it. But in the case of Grovile, who would be a fast, up-close grass type using the leaf blades and various other grass type attacks, my perspective changes. So we got a fun grass type now from Gen 3, big deal, right? But why pick Grovile specifically? Why not Sceptile? He's the final evolution and all, he's potentially more well known because Ash used him in the anime and whatnot, but the problem with this is if the Pokemon video game franchise is what Smash is taking inspiration from and not the anime, Grovile happens to be much more important in this case due to his role in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 2. One of the games in the Pokemon franchise consistently praised for its attention to detail and storytelling, yet for some reason there's no Mystery Dungeon content in Smash whatsoever. And because of Grovile's prominence in the game and tons of other factors that I've already listed, I feel he's the perfect choice to integrate this subseries into Smash. It's probably the biggest one Pokemon's got, and with Mario Kart, Luigi's Mansion, and the like getting in, there's no reason for why we couldn't get a temporal tower stage and maybe a character to go along with it. Just a thought, but hey, if 
you'd prefer Cinderace, that's fine, but I'd consider putting down the Sippy Cup and playing a real generation for a change. For Earthbound, there's only two to choose from, and while I enjoyed playing the totally legal fan translation of Mother 3, I can't justify keeping Lucas over Ness very much. What can I say, Ness is the PK fire without the knockback, gotta love the spam, right? Now in all seriousness, this mainly came down to the popularity factor, since the movesets are nearly indistinguishable, aside from that one big difference. If I had to break the tie, am I gonna go with the character that Nintendo consistently promotes with re-releases of their game and their services on their console, or the one who has been effectively blacklisted from history? I think you know where this is going. It's a shame though, as my idea to replace Lucas is Porky, the main antagonist of Mother 3, so we would have gotten a much more fitting hero versus villain dynamic with this one, but Porky is still in Earthbound, just not as the main bad guy, so I don't see it being the biggest deal in the world. The machine would have so many possibilities for moves, my goodness, it could clown on the clown car with the laser strikes, gas, countering devices, and hey, if you're really willing to reference Bowser Jr., they could include the Mecha Porkies as deployable minions. Just saying. While he's gotten the boss treatment several times over the years and with the irrelevance of Earthbound modernly, this likely means his chances for a spot have come and gone. But hey, we can still dream, and if he got in, it should have certainly been in the spot of Lucas. One of the franchises you could kinda say I made this video for was Fire Emblem, as while some franchises we've covered and especially some that we've got coming up have some very tough decisions to make, Fire Emblem can actually go a variety of ways to me. The series has eight representatives, but the amount of original reps can kinda be counted on one hand. Marth was the first anime swordsman archetype and succeeds in doing so. The moveset is simple, but it works, fits the character, and he's sort of the mascot of the franchise, so he's a great addition. But in Melee, he would receive a clone in Roy, and despite not even being an entirely original fighter himself, would go on to get an Echo Fighter in Ultimate after Marth already got a clone in Smash 4. There are literally four characters, all based on the same moveset, which is crazy, and if Marth is definitely not the worst, and the two Echoes aren't eligible, guess who I'm gonna replace? Roy is pretty irrelevant outside of Smash. The Japanese exclusive game he would debut in actually released after Melee, so many didn't know who he was before Smash, and even though Ike isn't entirely unique, he's still got more different than Roy and is a much more popular character, whereas with Robin, Korn, and Byleth, I don't think any argument could even be made. Roy is undoubtedly the guy who has to go. Who are we gonna swap him with? Maybe Hector, who's totally a villain, right guys? Now I'd go with Annie here, as next to Martha, she's pretty much another mascot of the series, appearing in so many games, and as such, she was given so many unique and interesting abilities to use. Want a Lance user? You can have it. Want a bow user? You can have it. Axe attacks? I think you get it. There's a large variety here which I like. They could potentially just focus on one weapon if they wanted, but I think the way to go here is definitely referencing the multiple iterations of the character, like how by left calls back to the three house leaders by using a variety of weapons, even though he himself doesn't necessarily have to focus on these in three houses. Kid Icarus is one of those unfortunate cases where neither of Pit or Paolo really needs to go. Even though I still believe that three reps for this franchise in comparison to some others like Sonic and Animal Crossing is pretty ridiculous. But Sakurai Bias isn't a thing, right? But at least they gave Paolo an interesting moveset. But Pit is isn't exactly slacking in that department either. So while Paolo is unique and definitely a lot more showy, and Pit has a lot of missed potential in his own right as we've gone over in previous videos, I still believe that his popularity over her trumps that, and as such, we're gonna replace Palutena. But thankfully for us here, there's actually a pretty seamless replacement, this being Medusa. In Kid Icarus lore, Medusa and Palutena ruled Angel Land together in peace, but they both had differentiating views on how this could be done, eventually spiraling into conflict, and yeah, now Medusa wants Palu gone. Of this Nintendo storytelling, right? She was the main antagonist of the original Kid Icarus on the NES and still serves as a boss in Uprising, so she's undoubtedly a pretty popular character. And while some have desired for her to be an echo for Palu, which makes some sense that could realistically reuse some attacks, I feel more of a pseudo-clone treatment could be better through the uses of the Vortex and Demon Missile attacks along with many others. While I prefer Viridi if we're gonna get a brand new character added for the series, if we're replacing Palu, there's no denying that this choice works much better to make up for the good that we lose from her moveset and storyline. Animal Crossing is weird, like realistically, Villager and Isabel shouldn't be anywhere near a fighting game, but I guess it's their main appeal, right? I like how they play too, a variety of interesting moves, but let's be honest, Isabelle is almost a glorified Echo. There's a lot of similarities, so even though she's very recognizable and Nintendo's been promoting the hell out of her over the last couple of years, she still likely hasn't surpassed the popularity of the main playable character from the series, who would probably contrast better with the replacement that we're giving her being Tom Nook. Next to Isabelle, he's probably the most popular animal-based character from the series with a prominent role in New Horizons and all, with the best part of including him to me being the potential to differentiate him from the existing Animal Crossing fighter archetypes in terms of moves. Sets. He'd attack with the bells, furnish you by from the games, I could see this guy using a pole vault as a nice way for him to quickly leap across the stage, just seeing this guy do all these wacky moves could create such a fun fighter concept. I really like the idea of replacing the role Isabel fills as an important NPC from Animal Crossing with another one who could easily improve on the uniqueness of her moveset which is very lacking. I don't have a big problem with Isabel to be honest, I'm not rooting for her to be cut and ideally we get Tom Nook as a third rep if anything with Isabel subsequently getting the Echo classification or, in a perfect world, some more distinct moveset changes. Okay, so 
I'm only covering this so I don't get called out, but I mean, do the Mies really count? I guess there's technically three representatives here, but it's not a standard series that you'd think of due to the character creation mechanic. We've got two melee-based fighters and the brawler and the swordsman in contrast to the range-based gameplay of the gunner, so I'd guess we cut one of those because of that. My main idea is to replace the swordsman with some other type of specialist. I see more potential for the brawler to fit what one would initially expect a standard creative character to play like, and the swordsman just feels like it's only there because, hey, half the roster has a sword, I guess we need one of these guys for potential costumes, huh? It's pretty forced to me and I think getting a me mage would be a lot more interesting. This would allow you to use some magical based attacks varying in elements, creating a better visual spectacle while providing a more fitting costume template for someone like Viridi who has a staff but doesn't fit the swordsman trope at all. This will give us a standard up close fighter, a standard projectile shooter, and a me that is significantly more unique from both. A me that also kind of references Miitopi, an original game that got released on the 3DS and the Switch. I wouldn't want to go out of my way to cut the swordsman for no reason, but if this was the choice, I'd definitely take it. Up next is probably the most difficult decision I had to make for this video, right up there with Donkey Kong, potentially even harder. This is the Xenoblade Chronicles series. Shulk and the duo of Pyro and Mithra both have very unique components. Shulk has a gimmick unlike any other character with the changing of his specialized abilities, granting him faster speed, higher jumps, and many other buffs for short periods of time, spawning communities surrounding the concept of potentially perfecting the playstyle of this character in the future. Fans get really passionate about it, and while I feel it could be better in many ways, for what it is, it's pretty damn good. But along with that, we basically have two characters in one, each with their own interesting attacks and abilities in Pyra and Mithra. Something that you don't seem to realize until just saying it out loud is the parallel between these reps is they both share the gimmick of changing something to suit a particular situation, which I think is pretty cool. They're both unique, so I'll go with the icon level of Shulk as the tiebreaker to keep him instead. Pyra and Mithra are very popular, don't get me wrong, probably surpassing Rex at this point, and it doesn't make any sense to cut them in a scenario except for this. But Shulk is still much more well known for his role in history as the face of the franchise. Except for when people thought he was a Final Fantasy character during his Smash 4 reveal trailer, that was not the greatest reaction you can get. Regardless of who you cut here, the replacement I'm obviously going with is Elma. One of the main characters from Xenoblade Chronicles X, a unique game for the franchise that probably wasn't even going to be a Xenoblade game at all early on in its development to be honest, and with that comes new elements to bring to the table, the blades, shadow strikes, various saws, and even the scales if they really wanted to. There's a lot at their disposal here, and while she was my personal hope for a new Xenoblade rep in Ultimate, it's hard to say they made the wrong call bringing in a much more iconic duo of characters, and a moveset that's very tough to complain about. Again, it's not ideal in any way to cut out Pyra and Mithra, but I'd love to see Elma in Smash sometime too. Our final franchise is pretty fittingly Final Fantasy, and it shouldn't be the biggest shock to anyone that Sephiroth is the guy that we're replacing, even though like Pyra and Mithra, there's really nothing wrong with him. He's another very well executed character from the second Fighter's Pass whose icon status just doesn't match that of Cloud, so he has to go. I love the hero versus villain dynamic created here, but if he had to go, I'd replace him with Tifa. Again, it's not ideal, but we're kind of constrained since both reps from Final Fantasy were from 7, so it's unrealistic to assume that his replacement could be someone like Bart's Clauser from a different entry since Smash doesn't acknowledge these as the same series. And from 7, Tifa is a pretty good bet. Being a protagonist character from the game, one of the lead members of the group in fact, and a longtime friend of Cloud, she could potentially bear some similarities to his moveset such as the limit system. But other attacks such as the water kick could be incorporated into it, along with the meteor strike, beat rush, and the dolphin blow being unique complements to it, providing her some references to the established protagonist while standing on her own, which is how the secondary protagonist spot should be executed, not a glorified echo like Isabel, a more boring version of the original like Falco, or someone who should really just be an alternate costume like Dr. Mario. This was a fun challenge that seemed very unnecessary for some series, while for others, it definitely seems like an ideal scenario. And if you want to see more content like this really soon, don't forget to subscribe.